I am joined now by a remarkable guest, actually, a fascinating individual, and although it's under incredibly bleak circumstances, I'm very, very pleased to be having a chat with him. It's Mike Reese, who is a writer on The Simpsons and who yes. visited the wreck of the Titanic last July on the same submersible that has gone missing. And with Mike is his wife, Denise, who had been due to make the same trip but couldn't go after testing positive for COVID, I believe, has previously been on several dives with Ocean Gate. Both of you, thank you very, very much. It is, look, subject matter aside, tremendous to actually meet you and talk to you on the show. But to the matter in hand, to the matter in hand, um, Mike, can I start with you? W what's it like to be on this vessel? And you've actually been on this vessel, right? And you've been, no, is that right? What's going on? I've been on the very sub that's in distress right now. And I did take it to the bottom of the sea and I did see the Titanic from it. And, uh, you know, a lot of talk is going on about the safety of the vessel. It is a very, very risky proposition. There's anyone who booked this trip knew it was gonna be risky. You sign a lengthy waiver that lists really a hundred ways to die, things that could go wrong. So everyone walks into this with open open eyes. It's uh, It reminds me of the early space program where people did everything to keep the astronauts safe, but things went wrong multiple times. And you go on and you hope for the best and you're prepared for the worst. And Denise, obviously Mike was fine and that trip went very well. Sadly, right now, what we have are several wives who are, are not in the same position that you are, who clearly, I mean, the mind boggles to think about what kind of emotional turmoil they're going through. What were you like about Mike making the trip? I mean, you wanted to actually be with him on the trip, didn't you? Yes, we were meant to go together. So when we do these adventures together and there's any risk, we figure at least we'll go together. But when we were apart and he was in probably the most dangerous situation he's ever been in, I was worried all day. I was skulking around mission control, trying to find out where the sub was. Um, and I kind of thought the worst could happen if, uh, if he's gone and all the Simpsons writers will hate me forever. All his family will hate me and I'm going to live an anonymous, solitary existence. This will be the end of my life as I know it. If, if something happens. Goodness gracious me. And again, you know, I just want to reiterate that the breaking news that we'd had a little while ago was that distress signals knocking, tapping in the form of an SOS signal have reportedly, this is according to a GB News source, been heard from near the Titanic. So at the moment, the clock is ticking, oxygen is running out and every breath matters, but those people are believed to be alive. Mike, you mentioned the safety of this craft. You said that you knew what you were getting into, that there are a hundred ways to die on this thing. It's like early year space exploration. But, I mean, do you think that the people on it now will be keeping a calm head? It seems like a little tin can. It's, well, it's a very sturdy tin can. And a lot has been made about the simplicity of it, that it's just the tube, really. And that you steer it with a real uh, joystick from a game console. And, you know, people are using that to paint it as kind of a rinky-dink thing, but actually it's a real charm to it all, how simple it is that, you know, in a pinch, I knew how to steer this ship. I navigated the sub for a while. And, uh, you know, it's just it just sinks to the bottom of the ocean by gravity and then, when you're done exploring, you release weights and you bob to the surface with buoyancy. It's, it's extremely low tech, which I liked about it. It was, it was a beautiful experience is something to know. And despite the fact that death was looming and despite the fact that this is the most exciting thing I've ever done, I fell asleep on the way down. It was just so, it was dimly lit, it was quiet everyone was calm, that I actually dozed off until we hit the floor of the ocean. I mean, there's a lot to what you've just said there that is absolutely remarkable, Mike, I'll be honest with you. Uh, difficult to know where to uh, digest all, all of that in. Um, 
Can I ask, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, Denise, as we understand it, the chief executive and founder of Ocean Gate, Stockton Rush, is on this vessel. Denise, I'll ask you, yes. but did, did, you, did you meet Stockton? What, what, what's, he, what's he like? Because, again, when stories like this happen, you know, a lot of criticism gets levelled at these people. They seem as like these, these wacky inventors that put public safety at risk in order to try and reach this bizarre goal. I mean, have you, have you met the guy? Yes, we, we worked with him. We, we, we did a very deep dive with him. He piloted a different submersible with us in it down to the Hudson Canyon. A very deep dive, very dangerous, and no one had ever gone to the bottom of Hudson Canyon, as I understand it. We didn't know that when we signed up, that no one had ever done that before. Uh, however, I had complete trust in him. I felt he was a visionary. He was doing something no one else was doing. He found ways to do really very impossible, very difficult things. I always saw him as a very handsome superhero in a way. Uh, he was he was doing such extraordinary things. I'm, I'm t I feel terrible that he was on that ship. It's a, the, uh, so the thing that makes me most optimistic about the problems they're having is that he is on board the sub. He built right. that sub from the ground up. He is an aerospace engineer. Obviously, if he thought it was very dangerous, he wouldn't be on it, but he's there. And he's just a masterful leader, too. He built the thing with this team who just admire him and respect him. And he knows what to do in a crisis. And uh, he's just very focused and the most detail-oriented man I've ever met. So, Mike, when you were on there and you were going down, before you nodded off, I mean, did anything yeah. go wrong? Did it did it all go smoothly? Were there any hiccups? Was there any sign to you or any indication to you whatsoever that, you know, something could go wrong in the future? There is a, you know, we as Denise mentioned, we took three separate dives with him before this one. And the four we've taken in total, there were always communication issues. It's just it's not the fault of the sub or the, the ocean gate. It's, it's the fault of very deep water that communication goes in and out. And uh, so there was, there was a little trouble connecting with them once we hit the ocean floor. And then uh, more to the point is just communication confusion. The idea that we're trying to find the Titanic. They are giving us guidance from above. And what they were saying was not connecting well with what we were seeing. And so it took a while just to find their stride and make sure they were, they were all on the same page. And once they did that, yeah, we did find the Titanic. I mean, this is absolutely fascinating. And it's worth noting then for people that clearly from what you're saying, yes, the length of time that this craft has been stuck is obviously now a massive concern. And that, that's new. But the idea that there was communication issues or that there was the capacity for things to go wrong, that's not new. That is something that you experienced. Um, I've got to ask, Denise, Mike managed to get down there and Mike managed to see the Titanic. If everything goes well and these people are rescued, Denise, would you go back on that vessel and go and try to find the Titanic, do you think? I was considering doing it again this year. Uh, and I was uh, coaxing another friend of mine to come the, with whom I've been in touch. Uh, yes, I think I would do it. I would, I might try to do this again. Even with the same, with the same group on the same vessel, would, would Mike, again, you, same question to you. So both of you, even now we are having, you know, the, the, the story of potentially disaster, yeah. both of you would get on that vessel and go back down there to the bottom of the ocean. If they're returned safely, I would do it. If they don't come yeah. back safely, uh, you know, certainly, you know, I'm not an idiot. It would give me great pause. And people should take a lesson from this in that we're developing all this space tourism now. And they're in the exact same position. And, you know, they have, I hope they learn from this example as they can make it as safe as they can, but they're never prepared for everything. Okay. When Mike, uh, go on, go on. When Mike, 
Yeah, he brought extra paper so he could, he knew he would have five days of oxygen if anything went wrong. And he thought he would write his last jokes in case he was found. He would have written something funny at the end. Uh, I think there might be, I hope, a sense of peace uh, among these dear people that are trapped in there. Uh, Absolutely. Look, both of you, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on. I think you are both fascinating people for a variety of different reasons and I hope that we can have a conversation again in the coming days and we're celebrating a successful rescue and maybe we can have a bit more of a a light-hearted conversation uh, about all of this. That is absolutely a wonderful couple there. Mike Reese, who is uh, the writer, one of the writers of The Simpsons, he went on the Titanic submersible, the Titan, uh, and actually went down and saw the Titanic and of course Mike's wonderful wife Denise as well who had been due to make that trip but couldn't make it after testing positive for COVID, both of you. Thank you very much. Take care. Wow. Thank well, you. so it's interesting to learn, isn't it? I think there, isn't it? That, that the idea of communication issues are not new. So let's be honest, it might have been a little while before anybody on board at Ocean Gate realised that there was anything seriously, desperately wrong or out of the blue. Uh, but also that both of those people would be willing to do that trip again. And interesting, I know a lot of you have been getting in touch on this just quickly, which is that People knowing the risks going in. I think a lot of this talk about whether or not this is a little kind of rickety ship and whether a lot of corners were cut and risks were taken, you know, I I do think that it is pretty clear that people knew risks that they were getting involved with and and actively wanted to be, you know, desperately trying to explore new elements of the world, even at the ocean bed. But there we go. Loads more on this story on our website, gbnews.com. 